Okay, I'm going to be showing you how to uh, change a audio switch on a 2014 Chevrolet Equinox. Um, I looked on the internet a little bit and couldn't find a how-to video on how to do it. So I'm just going to do one and show you how it's done. I've got the, uh, the spare switch on another steering wheel. And um, that will also give me a chance to kind of show you how that comes apart and uh, kind of the sequence that it will go back together. Now the first thing you're going to want to do when you start this project is to uh, disconnect the battery cables and you're going to want to disconnect both of them and on the Equinox it's located right under here. Um, there's one screw you have to pull out and it's behind the third wire right down there and I've already pulled it out. You'll, you'll slide this to your right and then it'll lift right up. And there's where the cables are located under there. And it just takes a 10 millimeter to uh, pull those off and get them loose. Okay, now the next thing you're gonna wanna do is take the airbag off. And um, it's a little bit tricky, but I've got this other steering wheel that I'll show you how to do it on. Um, you're gonna wanna rotate your steering wheel almost all the way to the left. You see how it's setting right there and I'll show you the reason why okay on the back of this other steering wheel you'll see these little holes right here okay and what you're gonna do is you're gonna rotate that to where you can get to those little holes right back here okay and what you're gonna do is you're gonna put a screwdriver right in this hole here and what you're gonna do is you're gonna pry that screwdriver up okay I'll show you how to do that if you see, you just take a pretty small uh, flathead screwdriver and you're going to run it through the back of that hole. The reason you need a kind of a short one is because you'll hit the uh, instrument panel if you don't have a short one. Now once you get it back, back here in the hole, the, the trigger mechanism will sit kind of the same angle as this trim does. So when you insert the screwdriver, you're going to want the flat part kind of the same angle. Okay? And then once you get it in that hole, you're going to pry up as you take your other hand and pull just very lightly on the uh, airbag cover. And it will pop loose. You can see it pop loose right there. Okay, now you can tell that I've spun the wheel the op opposite way. And you're going to want to hold just slightly a little pressure on this cover or it'll slip back in. Take your other hand with the screwdriver and go in the hole and do the same thing on the other side. And this is going to pop right out. Alright, now you can see I've got this loose. And you can kind of see back there that there's two wires that go into the back of the airbag. And I'm not going to unplug those. I'm going to gently set this up on the steering wheel while I work on uh, this switch over here on my right side. Okay, now that we got the airbag out, I'm going to show you on this other steering wheel uh, how to remove this trim. And these buttons here are actually attached on the back side of this trim. You can't just pop the button out. You have to pop this entire trim piece off. Now, the best way that I've found to do that is to grip just inside here and lift and this stuff will pop loose and you may have to put a little pressure and be real careful because um, it's not the strongest stuff in the world okay okay when you see that you've got this stuff popped off really easy I'm gonna flip it over and show you how that works um, it's just got some small studs that just have a little flange piece on them and they go in these holes and so you're just basically pulling those out. So you need to be real careful, but they're kind of on the corners. So you know where to, where to pull from. Now, this whole piece is attached, okay? So once you get this loose, you can remove your switch. All right, once you got the trim pop loose, um, you can do this before or after, but uh, the wires will need to be disconnected. So you can reach around behind it while it's still while the switch is still connected 
press a little tab on the back side and that wire will come right out. Okay, once you've got one loose, you can flip this over if you need to and it's a little bit easier to get to the other one so that you can pull it out. Now, with this piece, you notice that this switch stayed in and this one popped out, okay? All right, if you had a switch that stayed in when you took the trim off, um, all you have to do is disconnect the wire and then just kind of wiggle this thing back and forth and it'll pop out. It goes in pretty much the same as the trim. It just has some studs on it and uh, you can pull it right out of there. Okay, now to get your switch out of the trim, there's two silver tabs up here at the top. If you can see right there, and I'm just holding the switch in, I've already popped those tabs loose. There's two on the top side, and then there's two down here on the bottom side you can kind of see. And then there's also a keeper over here, a little silver keeper. And then also on the inside there will be two keepers in there. And you'll just kind of get those loose with a small screwdriver or something. And be pretty careful with them because they are uh, delicate. Okay, I'm back in the car now. Hopefully that helped you uh, see a little better what I'm talking about. A little better angles and stuff. But what I've done here is I've disconnected all the trim, okay? Now both my buttons stayed in. I'm, what I'm going to do is I flip this thing over. And there's two screws in it. In, right behind this button one right here and then one over here on the other side now I'm gonna pull those screws out and I've already done that and that way I can take this trim piece right here completely off see now it's gonna make it easier for me to pop these tabs loose alright I popped the old switch out and I put the new one in and I just put the switch in here and just pressed it back in and it pops right back into place so all my buttons seem good well one, one thing you can do is plug it back in and test it before you put it on but I don't like to do that because I don't want to turn the car on while the uh, while we still got the airbag hooked up so if you decide to do that uh, you know probably disable the airbag so um, wouldn't be common but so something doesn't happen with that now I'm going to put it back Put all the trim back together, uh, put the two screws in to put this back on, and hopefully everything will work right. Okay, I got my trim put back on here, uh, my new button's in, and I've got my trim lined up. And basically, you just got to press it back in there. Uh, just be pretty firm and press it all back in. And get all this back flush with the steering wheel like it was before. And also make sure you plug your buttons back in. That goes without saying, but you don't want to forget and have to pull the airbag off again. Once you got your trim back flush, which it goes in pretty easy, um, you're just going to put your airbag back on and you're just going to line these studs up with this hole right here and press it on there pretty firm and get it back in the same place it was before. Now this was really easy to put back on. Um, it popped in real easy and you can still see that it's got the, uh, the play for the horn and all. So it all looks pretty good. And now it's time to hook the battery cables back up and try her out. I think that's got it. Okay, battery cables are hooked back up. Everything seems to be working right. Um, there's the dirty radio. Uh, and it seems to be volume knob works our source knob works so it looks like everything's good here horn works should be good to go